So the next thing I want to chat with you about is a very interesting experience I had. And it started last night. I was in bed, getting ready to go to bed. And then I made the mistake, as I was plugging in my phone to charge overnight, of checking my email. And there was this woman on YouTube... who had replied publicly, put a comment on my podcast version of my live stream of the William Hurt raping Marley Matlin story. And earlier this week, I had talked about that. I said on that on that podcast episode that's published on YouTube as an audio-only file, that that was getting downvoted. It was upvoted. I had a nice comment from someone who said, thank you so much for publishing this. And then there were downvotes. And I was so curious. I said, what kind of person would downvote a podcast episode discussing Marley Matlin's rape by William Hurt? What kind of person is that that would downvote that? I mean, you're defending William Hurt, you're defending rapists, you're making excuses. And I guess the answer is yes. And now I sort of have proof of that, of what happened, actually. And I'm going to show it to you next, but it seems like my music has stopped. Oh, it's going to be one of those days, I can tell. There we go. So, let me see if I can find this page. This is what it looks like when someone decides to take you on YouTube. There's the beautiful face. Oh, look, the same shirt. Now, I look worse here, right? Because this is live, and I have fixed the lighting to be more mature. And that is really blown out. But blown out looks better. I can blow myself out of here too, but I don't want to ruin your eyes. So this is the podcast. 237 views so far, which for me is remarkable because usually when people listen to my podcast, they listen via Libsyn or Apple Podcasts. That's where all my listeners come from. YouTube maybe gets one or two. But it's fine. I'd rather have those two than none. So 237 since March 15 for me is spectacular. It's like a 200% increase, 2,000% increase of what I usually get. And so here's this woman named Dana Coleman, or Dana Coleman, but it's D-A-N-N-A-C-O-L-M-A-N. She says to me in response, Every actor is out to prove something. No man is only a hero. William Hurt was a brilliant actor and a flawed man, but he wasn't a terrible person, because that's how I concluded my podcast. But I had been a fan of him, and then you get more information as time goes on, and Marley Matlin and others accused him of sexual abuse and physical abuse. And I said, and in the end... You realize that this person you used to admire is really a terrible person. And she's saying, oh, no, he's not a terrible person. Now, I don't know why she's defending him like that. Maybe she has abuse in her life. Maybe she knows him. Maybe she has experience with this kind of thing. I don't know. But she put her name and her face on her comment. And so here are my comments in replying to her this morning. And they're quotes from articles, so it's not my opinion. Quote, but our relationship quickly morphed into a different cycle. Bill would snap, physically shove, punch, and beat me, followed by tears, apologies, and him offering me expensive gifts. When the battering began, I sloughed it off. He said he was sorry. Perhaps I instigated it. I only had to visit the emergency room once. It was only after many, many years I admitted to myself that I was the victim of domestic violence. 
And that's from Donna Cass, William Hurt's former partner. Not just Marley Madden. Here's another of my reply to her reply. As the Chicago Tribune reported at the time, Jennings, another woman who was abused by William Hurt, says she learned of his abuse from her son, who had indicated to her that he saw Hurt kicking Marley Matlin during his visits with his father. It said that Jennings had two abortions during her relationship with Hurt. The second is People Magazine reported because Hurt was beating her up so much. That's from Salon Magazine. My third reply, there are fire engines in the background if you can hear that. I wonder about all the folks who Google search their abusers waiting for the day when they will no longer exist. Death humanizes people. When our abusers die, we might be surprised to discover that in the end they were mortal human beings. Except for us, they are also boyfriends, lovers, spouses who tried to change the course of our lives, leaving behind brutal remnants of themselves that we will never forget. That's from Rolling Stone. And here's a woman from six days ago who said thank you, and I thanked her for her reply. So this Dana Coleman, Dana Coleman, was not done with me. So she immediately posted another reply, two replies, to stake out her position publicly on my YouTube page. He, William Hurt, dated Marley Matlin for one year. And they cohabitated for two years. This is a very short time that he is accused of abuse, considering he was sober after their relationship ended and for most of his life. Okay, so it appears that she's making excuses that a one-year relationship, a two-year relationship, three years altogether, shouldn't have any sort of influence in evaluating the character of William Hurt. Now, I'm very curious what her take is on date rape and family rape and stranger danger rape, something that happens within an hour or two and then they never see each other again except perhaps in a courtroom or in their nightmares. Here are my replies. And again, I'm quoting articles, not my opinion. The mother of one of his children William Hurt's children, and his former girlfriend, Sandra Jennings, alleged in court that Hurt subjected her to violent physical and verbal abuse, including hitting her in the face when she was holding their infant son. Also from Salon Magazine. A second reply. The next thing I knew, he'd pulled me out of bed, screaming at me, shaking me. I was scared. I was sobbing. Then he threw me on the bed, started ripping off his clothes and mine. I was crying. No, 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 please, Bill, no. The next thing I remember is Bill ramming himself inside me as I sobbed. Marley Matlin wrote of the last time he beat her. She recalled. The struggle turned violent. I was afraid I might not survive. I pulled myself free and ran to the phone. Before I could say anything, Bill yanked the phone out of my hand and slammed it down. She left him after that. Who knows? And my final reply to this woman, Anna Coleman, in the case of Madeline, who lost much of her hearing when she was a toddler, She alleged that Hurt emotionally abused her the night she won an Oscar for their first film, Children of a Lesser God, for which she was also nominated and did not win. After the ceremony, she claims he berated her. Do you really think you deserved it? She said. She said she feared winning for this reason. 
dreading a violent response from him. The two had met on the set of that film when Matlin was still a teenager and a fan of his work. Along with the beatings, Matlin alleged Hurt also raped her when he was drunk. Hurt went into treatment for substance abuse multiple times. Why didn't anything do anything? The article continues. In Children of a Lesser God, bruises can clearly be seen on Matlin's leg. Bruises that have nothing to do with the character or her story. But were likely inflicted upon her by the actor, William Hurt, in real life. While Matlin says the emotional abuse continued on set... She wrote that the film's director came to believe that it was all just part of Bill's process. That he needed conflict. So not only is this uh, YouTube commenter sort of excusing his behavior, so was the director on the set of Children of Alaska God. So those are my responses on my YouTube page concerning what's going on with William Hurt and Marley Mallon. Now, in my experience, what's going to happen with this woman who has commented in my responses to her is probably one of two things. She will delete her comment, which may or may not, I don't know how YouTube works, delete my comments as well, but I have preserved them. I will repost them if she does that. I also have a screenshot of her name and face on my YouTube page commenting. Or she will double down and re-reply, defending herself and defending William Hurt. And she might get a friend or two to come and defend her as well and take all of them on. Now, it's because of this that I just get tired of Know, having comments on articles. It's a tiring process, not an interesting process. The people who try to take you on have a vested interest in some way, emotionally or politically or connectively. That is never revealed. But you can kind of make connections because why would a person come to the defense of William Hurt? He never apologized publicly or privately for any of the abuse or the rapes that he committed. As far as I know, and all the research that I've done, and if I'm wrong, I'm happy to read about it elsewhere. And that's why, you know, having these comments open on stuff is really, it used to be interesting. And on uh, the articles that I published with my friends and colleagues, we would always have a policy of the author responding to the person who's writing a comment. So there's direct interaction. What's going on? People appreciate that. But that leads to trouble sometimes because people then just try to, you know, bait you. And the best comments that I've seen are on like blog pages or in the newspaper, digitally, is people just comment, and the author and never comments back, and then the commenters just have at it and attack each other. And that's probably a smart way to go, just leave it out there. And maybe I should have just left this Dana Coleman woman out there saying what I believe are ridiculous things in defense of William Hurt, that he's not a terrible person. I think there's a lot of evidence that he was a terrible person. Great actor a terrible person. And this all has to go back, if we want to talk about acting and drama, to Aristotle and habit of action. And playwrights and dramatists are very familiar with that. How a person behaves is how they are defined. And I don't believe in recovery for alcohol that they say, oh, it wasn't me, it was the alcohol. The alcohol hit her, not me. The alcohol raped her, not me. I don't believe that's how they teach you to move on with your life and accept responsibility. 
And in many steps programs, you're supposed to admit this, what you've done, it's your fault, you apologize to people you have offended. And if you're not in a steps program, just as a human being, if you've hurt someone, you've done something wrong, you publicly apologize to them. It's a, it's a public issue and you privately apologize to them as well. Habit of action. Was the habit of action of William Hurt over the arc of his life one of a disinterested abuser and perhaps one time or more rapist? That's not for us to decide. You can look and talk to the people who knew him and worked with him. You can look at the public record. Do a Google search on William Hurt and abuse and see what pops up. It's not just one or two articles. And as we close this thought on abuse and rape and reputation, I urge you, if you are a victim of this, of anything, to speak up immediately. Because the clock is ticking against you. And silence can be seen in some eyes, in a jury's eyes, in YouTube commenters' eyes, in the eyes of justice. That if you don't move, don't speak up, don't take action, then that's seen by them as acquiescence, that you accept the behavior, that it's fine with you, and you just move on. And I am reminded of the murder in 1970 of a young woman in Lincoln, Nebraska named Wendy Heil. And she went to my high school. She was older than I was, I was a young kid. But it shows what happens in the 1970s in the Midwest. Wendy Heil was taken from her home a block away from where I lived and was raped and murdered by a fellow student who then subsequently lied to the police. And this gentleman, person, rapist, murderer was convicted and did time. And he had powerful parents. And then he came out and got a good job, good government job, institutional job, married, and I believe had kids. Is he a terrible person or is he reformed? What about the family of Wendy Heil who lost a daughter and never gained her back? While her murderer and rapist is loose and having a wonderful life and getting a pension and being paid and marrying a woman and then having children with her and she with him. And there are people who will defend this murderer. Oh, he did his time. He served his purpose. He can have a life now. And I just say to them, well, what kind of life does Wendy Heil have moldering in her grave? Who is standing up for Wendy Heil? Where is Wendy Heil's childhood? Where are her children? And I would say that that person is a terrible person for raping and murdering Wendy Isle. But the more interesting question for me, as a dramatist and as a person interested in the human condition, is what kind of woman would not only marry a convicted murderer and rapist, but then bear his children? And that is a question I cannot answer. And I do hope that in my lifetime, I will never be able to answer it. And now we're going to take a very brief break. I'll be back in a moment. 